Good morning. Um, my name is Denise Glasscock. I work for Accenture in the Emerging Technologies uh, portion of Accenture. And we wanted to talk to you today a little bit about cloud management cloud, and cloud operations. We're going to do something for a little bit different in that we're going to talk about taking this from a holistic perspective. So what I wanted to do was talk to you about uh, what it means to us and to our clients when we talk about holistic cloud operations. So what we're looking at is you need to be able to look at this thing from a business to technology operation. What we do and when we talk to our clients about hybrid and private clouds, about virtualization technologies, even legacy technologies, we look at this from a very holistic point of view and we actually step back and we decompose the entire environment. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my stakeholders on, online. I want to talk to people about what that business mission is. If my technology decisions don't map to that business conversation, then I've failed as a technologist. So what I wanted to do was just t t take you through a little bit of, of we'll look at some kind of high-level use cases, talk about what it means to move from a virtual to cloud environment. What are those decisions that come in behind that? What's the workflow as far as just a transformation thought process? We'll talk about what the broader needs are and how that means, how do I take the difference between automation and orchestration? So real quick, just to give us a, a, a pace here, right? So what, what are the key things? What's orchestration? And we're, I'm gonna to ask you guys a few questions about this, but then we need to understand what it means to have disruption and technology disruption. What does that mean to your business and how do we react to that? Identify where I start. So you're gonna look at where you, where you actually start your process. Where, where do we decide, how do we decide? What do we establish as success? What's, what, what does that mean to you or to us? What are the frameworks? So we've actually, we're gonna show you a couple, couple ways that you can look at frameworks. Everything that we do is built on a common framework. Then the other things are is, what does that platform look like? And this is the orchestration platform, not the cloud platform, but they're integrated, right? So it's important that you understand how that orchestration platform interacts with that cloud platform or your existing legacy. And finally, do you have the right skills? Do you know anybody? Do you, do you know you have the right capabilities in-house? Because if you go off and you start to go do this, you don't have the skills, then where, do you, where are you going to end up? Right? So you, you think about all these things at one time. Real quick in the room, who in here is technical? And it, deeper light, I'm just going to get an idea. Cool. And then business? You got any business leaders? Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to focus a bit on the technical aspects, but I'm going to drive this like a, like a business leader would, would want to hear. Okay, so it is, think, of, think of this as your boss is telling you, you've got to come up with the solution for the orchestration platform, and it needs to be able to map to my business processes. Okay, so that, that's what the guy's going to go after. So now I've got so many things i got to think about, right? As I start to come up with what is it that I have to do in order to map my technology to my business process, right? So now I've got to make my stakeholder happy. And what you're going to see is there's, there's hundreds of questions. When we go through this process with a client, we do a, we do a really, really deep assessment of what it means to take all the considerations in place in order to move forward into the next step of deciding what the technology is. You may decide that the technology for a particular workload isn't cloud, and that's okay. But it's a journey, right? It's a process that you're gonna start with. You're gonna go through all of your decisions, and those decisions are gonna help you with what you're gonna draft in your design. So it's, it's some of these things here, it's, it's just about taking up what are, what are the things I need to think about in order to take the next step. So why do I care, right? <laughs> what, what, what does all this mean to, my, to, to myself and to my, to my business leaders? When you guys start thinking about orchestration, the value that, it, that this brings is it's bigger than just putting together provisioning. It's not a tool. It's a platform. It's a system. It carries with it all of the things that you need to do in order to integrate, automate, orchestrate, and do rapid, rapid, rapid uh, modular environments. So when we look at this thing, it's, it still goes back to the processes, right? Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to map in and compose all of the things that I need to do in my orchestration platform. So as far as what we're gonna get, get through here, we've gotta be able to understand what are the existing tools. Let me give you an example of real life. One of our enterprise clients, in two data, now the mega data, the mega data centers, 
but within two data centers, there are 800 tools that run their environment. There's not a, there's not a very high likelihood that those 800 tools talk to each other. And I'd be, I'd be even more willing to say out of those 800 tools that many of them are never monitored. So what does that mean? That means you have a lot of overrun. You have a lot of inefficiencies. You have a lot of information that you're not using. So what do you do? If you can create the right platform for yourself, and you look, you look at this thing from a, from a holistic point of view, where that you've broken down, you've decomposed your workloads, you've decomposed your business requirements and the processes behind that, now you can actually come back and say, I understand. And you may become better understanding of the workload than the application owner may have. Because you're going to look at it from a different perspective, right? You're going to decompose what does it need in order to, to be managed, right? The, the application guy, he's more worried about how it runs. And, and in the end, you're going, to, you're going to be part of that decision because you want to optimize the performance of that application as well, right? So we want to know what all, all those pieces are. The other thing that we want to look at is, are we doing the right services? And how do you know that you're doing the right thing? Right? So again, that's a process of breaking down what you, what you don't know and, and creating a process of, of, of a workflow, if you will, that will actually bring you to what you do know. So this is, this, is, this is a journey, right? This is a process that you're going to take yourself on. The other thing is, if you don't have this to work right, what's that impact? Right? What, what does it mean to, your, to, your, to you and to your clients and to your bosses? So there's things like that that we're going to look at. Um, the other thing is, I have seen so many definitions of orchestration, right? So what I wanted to do here is, this is Denise's definition. <laughs> and, and what this does is, what I'm, what I'm going to do is break it down into key terms, right? So what are the key characteristics of orchestration? The answer that you come up for your environment might be slightly different, but they should have these key characteristics. Process integration. What does it mean to understand the flow of what the application or that workflow needs? How does it map back to the business requirement in order to make sure that you're getting the mission and vision of that business met? The modular approach that we do about building integration but keeping it modular, we'll show you an example of a conceptual design, but everything that we do pardon me, is in parts. Right? So I, I, take, I take a bunch of different components I maximize what's in each one of those blocks, like a building block, right? And then I can, I can choose which block I want. So that integrated approach gives me the ability to not only create a modular approach, but I know when I snap it in that it will work. And everything that we do is an API framework. The other things that we do is we look at from end to end. I don't look at just one application and one piece of the application. I look at the entire environment that application is going to have other influences to other applications, other environments, other resources, how those resources react. So you're going to, you're going to think about those things. The services, you should have a list of services that will come out of this, right? So you start thinking about what orchestration services are needed in order to be able to complete the process for that particular workflow. There's always security, right? What does it mean to have orchestrated security from end to end? Think about the compliance needs that you're going to have for that particular workflow, that particular process that it needs to complete. The identity and access management. How are you going to give access? Right? So think about it this way. You're going to have different personas. Right? So when we talk about cloud forms, for example, there are personas. And as you look at those personas, depending upon who wants to access the system, you might want to create something that's very, very simple. All they want to do is be able to look at it from, think about it like a, like a shopping cart. Right? I just want to see the overview click on the icons and go. The other, other folks, like the infrastructure folks, they might want to have the more, uh, more of the depth and breadth of what the orchestration platform can do, because you need to program things. So we need, think about who is using your system and how you, how you define that. Also, you can build in the security parts of this as well. That allows you to be able to make sure that the integration and security layers are built in. And then finally, what are the operational elements, right? So you're going to have had some kind of service management or operations management going on today, if you're looking at cloud or thinking about moving to cloud, the, the first question you ask yourself is why? What, why do, what do I need to go to cloud? What, what is the key principles that I need in order to make that workload perform in the cloud? What are the, what are the elements that I want out of that? So you'll, you'll go through a series of, of questions and answers. The end, the end process here is a, it's aligning the business processes to technology, 
right? So I'm going to say that 10 times over and over again. It was, I, want, I, want, I want to get out of this whole thing is when we talk, start to go through this, you're going to see that there are, I think there's something like 18 different orchestrators that, that are true orchestrators. Orchestrators are not a tool. They're a platform. If you're using a tool, you're not using the capability of orchestration. It is not just provisioning, right? It's, it's that integrated approach. So we'll, we'll go through that now. The uh, curiosity. What are the, what's the difference in orchestration and automation? So just somebody, somebody give me an idea of what's or, or, give me one orchestration key piece. Okay, well, we'll do it this way then. Integration. Okay, so, so I've got to have integration in order to have my orchestrator understand my workload. I've got to have intelligence. I don't want to react to a threshold. I want to be ahead of that threshold. I want to be able to be predictive. So I don't, I'm not going at this thing anymore. Well, I'm going to set a 70% threshold. It's going to spawn something at that point. We're smarter than that now. We use data analytics on the front end of our orchestration in order to create the processes that we need to project the future. Before that application even needs to worry about being starved, it'll never get there. And if I need to downsize that, I can look at the application both in real time, historical, and other information components that allow me to draw in information that I can act upon. And that's critical because as I start to go through all these frameworks in this, in this decision process, I'm going to likely transform something at some point. I'm going to be taking other workloads that are existing in other environments and I'm going to want to move them or at minimum, I'm going to want to orchestrate them. So if you think about this thing in a, in a broader sense, right, it's being able to take a, a holistic view of the entire environment. It doesn't matter if it's sitting on a legacy traditional server, bare metal, or if it's sitting in the cloud. I want to own that. I want to know what it's doing, and I want to operate that. And, that, and what that does is it gives me control. The other things that, that we're going to look at is the first thing that everything, I did a bunch of research on this, everybody thinks about automation is a script. It's not. Automation is not a script. It, 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 is, it is the act of taking task, mail task, and making those automated. But it's more than that today, right? It's, it's about DevOps. It's about integration. It's about how the processes of an application can be identified and leveraged so that we can take the most effective route to make that application live. We can take actions against that. We can use things like Ansible or things like um, uh, some of the other open source chef or puppet, take, take your choice, where you can actually bring together the automation and orchestration. So orchestration can really make the difference with the automation tools. And again, we use it as a platform. Our platform is a stack, and I'll show you the stack. So there's, there's endless opportunities here. It's kind of interesting. Um, the, the end result here is don't boil the ocean, right? So you're going to come up with I need to think about agile processes. I need to think about what I'm doing in the service management layer. So what, what, what is my UI and my portal access? What am I doing around my, my tools? And how do I define those tools into my environment in order to create the platform? What am I doing about patterns? You're, you should find reusable patterns throughout your environment, whether it's on the physical infrastructure or the software infrastructure or even at the application layer. There are repetitive patterns. The other things that we're going to look at is, is what are all the things that we need to think about for skills? Right? So you're going, to you're going to have your legacy environment. You've got, you got to make sure that you support that legacy environment. At the same time, you're now thinking of future. So what's the future? So how do I get my people skilled from, from today to tomorrow? And what do I leave behind in skills so that I can maintain that legacy while I do that transformation? Those are, those are critical things. And as you move into things like OpenStack, in the open layer, you're going to find that the skills are much more complex. What you have to do is harder. So it's a prepping people and making sure that they have an opportunity to learn at a longer stint, it's important. We'll, we'll give you an example of, of enablement program at the end here so you get an idea of what we're doing. The other thing is disruptive technologies, right? All of this is disruptive. I don't care if it's virtualization, cloud, or any, or any version thereof, it's disruptive. And the, it's good. Disruption is good as long as you know how to manage it, right? So what we do here is we look at the business needs. And all I'm trying to show you here is there are considerations for every business need that you define. And these are just examples. There's, there's 100 more, right? The, the end result is, is that 
you're going back to the technology based on the business. That's, that's the key thing. Why do I want to do disruptive technology? What are the benefits, right? So key thing here, we want to drive you towards the thought of digit, digit, digital business, right? Making things as real time as possible, making them as agile and as live and most efficient as possible. But keep in mind, not everything's tolerant, right? So you have to look at the risk and the tolerance of that application or that business need against that idea of agility. There's also the idea of what's called new IT. Accenture has a new IT approach that talks about modular, rapid, integrated, liquid, and continuous integration. What we do is we look at these things as a appliance-like environment that I can move at will. I can recreate them on demand, and I can, I can stand up full environments in minutes. And, it, and we're doing this with OpenStack. So you can, you can do this whether it's a, a, a virtual environment or an OpenStack environment. As long as you create a holistic pl common platform, you can do this again and again. And so we're, we're taking containers to the nth degree at the infrastructure layer and at the application layer so that we can move these applications and these infrastructures quickly across multiple data centers. The liquidity idea of being able to be really software centric, right? This is cool, actually. So think about, you know, you're taking a, an application environment or an infrastructure environment, and you're making it as soft as possible, you're making it as, as dynamic as you, can, as you can stand it. And the way that we do that is a common framework. And I, I'm going to keep pushing that because it's important. What we do is we break it down, so we decompose it to its simplest form. If you take OpenStack and you bring it into its common form, and, it, and what are those core five services, so go back to um, Essex, you know, where, where that we were talking about what are, what are the major things that we need in order to run an extended operating system for cloud, right? And it's really compute network storage. Break those things down, define them, and then what you can build is that common framework, and then what we do on top of that is then we build the complexity. So again, I have, I have a Lego building block, and then that way my, my orchestration and my automation snap in. The art of the possible, right? I can do anything with these platforms, right? You guys, I don't know if you, how much you've played with, with all this yet, but on an open platform, you can do anything. You have a canvas to make anything you want. The thing that I see again and again is the canvas is so big, you don't know where to start, and you don't know where to end, right? So that's where you go back to that holistic approach. You break down what are the questions, what are the decisions, who needs to provide me input, where do I get that from, how do I define what those principles are that I need to guide myself on? And what we do, again, is we find that there's a lot of complexity in these workloads. So we break that workload down. We actually use data analytics to define the workload. Once I understand that workload, I can then have a common con a conversation with my application team, and then we can break that down even further. Once I know that, then I know what questions to ask of the application. I want to make sure that it's a performance optimized before I do anything to it. One of the things that you can think about, and this is an interesting thought, is, is that as you look, look at your orchestration platform, you could propose as, min, as, as little as two options under a template. And because you can right size on demand now, once that demand is, once, once that template has been deployed and that workload is live and running, you can then take your data analytics and understand what that workload need is. You may have deployed too big of a machine and you need to downsize it, or you may have been starving the machine and you need to upsize it. My, my argument with this is, is that with some analytic background, you can take the applications and the templates and you can run bare minimums. And the cool thing about this is, is that you actually are running at a higher efficiency than ever before. So we're, we're actually running test loads like this now. The other thing that we do is we continuously integrate. And that the, the point behind that is, is that there's a, there's, a, there's a drive and demand that says to, to, to cloud today that the applications will affect my business if I can't have them in a timely manner. So think about this, you know, if, if you're working on a mobile platform, you're doing IoT or you're doing some layer of platform as a service, and those applications that are being utilized are actually running some form of the business. And you want to move those into some cloud layer by, the, by that move, depending on what the move is and how long it takes, you could decrease your competitive abilities. 
So you want to understand what that application is, and then when you choose to do that move, you want to make that move as clean as possible. That's why we decompose. Let's see what else we got here. So here's some, I think this is an interesting conversation. So what, it, what is it, what are the common steps, right? So this is what we use. We actually go through a process that we talk about in rapid discovery. The first thing that I do is I assess the workload. So I have a, I have a, a suite of tools that run under my system, that on my platform. That platform information provides me that rapid discovery. Once I understand, and I, run, I can run it for about two hours. In that environment, I can get a, a, basic, a basic understanding of what all of the virtual environment's doing, what the legacy environment's doing, and how I want to begin to touch it. That's just my first step. This first step can be as simple as you take a few hours, you look at it, it helps you drive some decisions, or you can step back and take the rapid discovery as a process under which you're going to make decisions longer term. So now instead of it being a few hours of a decision process, you may run it for a few months and actually see what that, what that information brings back. The more analytic you get on the front end, the better the information and the move will, will happen on the back end. That's, that's a critical conversation. The other thing is, what's the opportunity? How do I know what I'm doing is right? So what you're going to look there is, that's tolerance, right? If, if the risk is too high for the application because it just doesn't fit, and I have to do a lot of code or transformation change, then I, have a, I, may, I may have too high of a risk for that application. Also, think about where it's running at. If the cloud is too dynamic for the application, then you consider that. The, what's cool about this is all of these phases are built into our orchestration platform. So as part of our platform, we look at things like convergence. We understand what it means to bring multiple environments together. Right? So think about this. I have clients that run private clouds and, clients, and the same client that runs public clouds. To, before, we, before we got involved together, that client was taking an entire group that would run their private cloud, and there was two private clouds. On the other side, they're also running a very, very large Microsoft cloud. So that's a separate environment. So it's two teams running right there. By bringing together a single pane of glass, we bring that environment together. Those teams now converge, and the information that's gathered and captured is now more viable for the company. They understand what's going on at any given time. They can take the orchestration and automation to the ne next level, and they can drive better efficiencies. So there's better value there. The other thing that we look at is, is how do we enable change, right? So we, we need consistency. But at the same token, change is, in, change is a variable that's going to happen. And what we want to do is we look at things that we can consolidate, that we take for migrations, we look for that disruption, and we look for how we can manage the services. Right? So when you start looking at that, this stuff, you want to take the, the information that you have and create, again, a holistic perspective. The other thing that you want to do is you want to control. There are going to be environments that are one-offs, things that, that, that somebody has what we call snowflakes. Right? There are many of these things laying about that you may not, be, may, may not know of, but if you bring them into a single orchestrator, now you understand what, what's going on in service management, you might have an opportunity to help them with performance. You might be able to help them with being able to bring a better platform together. Certainly, you can give them better, better health, an, an opportunity to, to, to run faster. And then the, finest th the final thing is delivery, right? Is where do I want to go with this? How do I, how do I implement and do business as usual? So you, you, these, are, these six steps are really, really easy. They're common. Each one has uh, the ability to be broken down into a modular format. And that's what I like about this thing. You can make this as small as you want, or you can make it as big as you want. What does success mean? So th this, is, this is for you to decide, right? So what, what we do is we look at business and technology again. There are different stakeholders and different opinions. They need different things. What you're trying to do is to bring that alignment together so that you're not building different things, right? You want to come to common frameworks. What we also look at is technology models. We look at what does it mean to bring in a hardware-centric model, a bare metal, right? Versus what does it mean to have software-centric, so truly liquid assets. And then the other idea of being online, network agile, network-centric. Think about things like going into the telcos with NFV. Right, so that it really gives you the ability to be on the wire. What, are, what does that mean to your business? Which one? There's probably all of these apply at some point. Some may apply more than others. But the end, the end thing that you want to think about is focus on the outcomes. What are you, what, what are you trying to build? 
So now, just to show you some ideas, this is some considerations that we do when we do transformation. So now the idea of, I've got something that's already out there that I need to move. You're going to have what's called green field, brown fields, and black fields. Green fields are new, right? But even if you stand up the brand new environment, you're going to put something on it. Does that mean you're going to put something that's not existing in the environment today? Probably not likely. So there still is a move that's going to happen. It may happen in a different format, but there's still a move that happens. The brown field is true, honest to God. I, I have an old, older environment. I'm going to move that older environment one on one at a time. And, and whether it's a new, an, a new machine or not, that the idea there is it's a full transformation. It is a true migration. The black field, that's the environments that I don't have a good place for. But there's no reason to leave it behind. Right? You still can orchestrate and automate this environment. You should. You want to own it. You want to control it. So what we do here is we go through the idea of people process technology, right? It doesn't change. You, the outcomes that you're looking for, the considerations might be different, but the actual, what, what, is, what is the process work that you need to do? That process work is still there. What is the people going to do? Think about the skills, right? Where's, where's their alignment? How, how do they get their job done? How do you free up people so that they aren't running task so that they can do the higher order thinking? Right? Let, let the machine do the task. The other thing is the technologies. There are many, many choices for technology. On the orchestration layer, you're going to find there are so many choices, it's hard to decide. So that, that's, what you, that's where you come down with the orchestration decision process. You have to look at this as a platform, not as a tool. What are the frameworks? This is an example of our framework. So this is really easy done. What we did here is, is I took out all of the other uh, influencers, because I wanted you guys to see what are the common um, processes that we go through. The common process is you discover, right? What is that? What is in that environment? You go through an, an assessment. You define what that workload is. You go through the target design. What are the things that I need to have in order to put that workload into its next level? Planning for the releases. What what is the process I need to have in order to make that release come alive? There's, there's going to be steps in there. What is the things that I need to do around remediation and testing? What is your process? Are you using Waterfall? Are you using Agile? What, what, are, you, what are you doing, right? Do you, do you want Git and Jenkins and, and all, all, the, all the common things that we're seeing today? Do you need something different? The other things are deployment planning, right? This is where it starts to hit the road. We're, we're now we're getting to the point where we're going to put systems on the ground. We're going to put applications into those systems. The, the series of processes that go on there we have, an, again, we have an entire platform that we, that we run across with methods that actually help us get here. So at the execution time, we know we've got all of the testing done. We've gone through and we've built the UI properly. We've, we've, created, we've created an environment that we can replicate, that we know that the application is running on. So th these are just high level. But that's, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of some of the flow that we have. So some of the patterns. The most common patterns you're going to look for, right? Architecture, service, and applications. When you take these apart, what, are they, what does it mean? And this, this, this is going to help you with your orchestration platform and with your cloud platform, because once you start to break down these patterns, you'll be able to define how to make that modular approach work. OK, this is a, I'm going to call this conceptual. So this is a conceptual picture of what a platform might look like for cloud management. The reason that, we, that you want to look at, look at it in a, in a conceptual point of view first is you want to define what are all the building blocks. So these are literally the building blocks that we would consider. All of this information that comes out on the, under the configuration, the framework, the engines, and the automation, that helps us understand what's going to run at the platform layer. Under that, the orchestrator components in order for us to be able to make sure that we understand lifecycle, license, um, the ability to do integrated automation, the, the, the points of view that we have around analytics and decision engines, and how do we actually take that to the next level? We also we, we use cloud forms. You can use other options. But the cloud forms integration that we have is probably the, the, the thing that makes this thing unique, is, is that it's, it's being driven from an API. All of us is driven from APIs. We don't do anything that's not an API format. And the reason that we do that is it makes it portable. And that's what's important to us. So what we build in our showcases and then deliver to our clients are almost the exact same thing. The client obviously gets a customized version. So in, in the end, 
we get to control what these configuration, what the, what the orchestration looks like, what the automation looks like, with security and compliance. You have to consider how are you going to manage audit control. Right, so that's all built into the orchestration layer. Do one more here. The, so this is, an, this is an example of a modular approach, right? You can do it any different way. But this is a, at the intelligent orchestration platform. What we do is we looked out and across this and said, what are the components that we need in order to build a platform that I can take again and again? I can reuse it, right? So I looked for patterns. I got to have a service catalog. Everybody knows that. Do you, do you take one that you already have? Do you build a new one and then you integrate from the old one? Do you take your orchestration for your, think, think about your fabrics, right? How are you going to orchestrate your fabrics? And in our case, our, our network orchestration is built into our, our CloudForms environment. So again, our, our orchestration platform is large. The other thing that we have is we have a built-in migration capability. So by, by putting our platform together and actually launching it, you have the ability to migrate from that platform. You don't have to build anything else. The other thing that we do is by building rapid discovery control and policy man management, we actually build that as a single, we have, we have a single source of knowledge that, that we can capture that from. And by doing that, I can make that a modular program. I can, I can plug that in and plug it out. The other thing I can do is I can do rapid installs. So now I have the ability to, to, to put up, whether it's an OpenStack environment or a Rev environment or, an, or another environment, I can stand those up quickly. And I can do it because I have a common framework. Oh, and the thing I want to get across here is what we're talking about on all this again and again is you're going to decompose and then you're going to recompose everything. Right? So that's, if you think about your environment as that, that I'm, if I take everything down and I break, if I break everything down to a simple form and then I recompose it back into what I need, then you have your building blocks. Let's see what else we got here. Here's an example of our migration capability. Right? So um, the, the thing I want to get you to see here is, is that what we start with is we go in and we do that rapid discovery. We, we go in, we do that interrogation, we understand the, the, the form of what the application needs are. We talk to the business leaders. We go through this process of trying to reduce all the complexity. We take this and we've built a, a programmatic install that we can take from start to finish. The thing here is this is a life cycle. This is not a project, right? This is something that's going to go on once that machine or that environment moves to its new, it doesn't end there. It continues to live. And that's important to, to, to keep, keep in front of yourselves. The, co the converters that we have are built into the platform. They're, they're not something that's just a, a separate piece that you just, you just convert the, the, the virtual machine itself and then you're done. That's only, that's only a really small portion of what we do. The integration of the orchestration, once that machine has been defined into the orchestration layer, it now becomes part of a broader holistic platform. And as an example, the value that's been delivered, we have a client that we've done over 4,500 4, virtual machines. We can go faster and cheaper than we've ever done before. So think about the cost of migration, the people, the technology, the time that it takes. All of those things come into play when you actually start to perform migrations against tens of thousands of virtual machines. Right, so now what you're looking for is, how do I take that and make it edible, <laughs> make, make, it, make it discernible that I can, I can actually take and decompose each one of these things? You'll have things that are easy. I recommend easy first. Right, so take, 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 the, take the easy wins. Go after this thing with the fact that you can do updates in place once you're done. So it's, you have a decision process, right? Do I optimize before I move? Do I move and then optimize? Right, so there's just a process you have to decide there. We, we, we optimize first and then move. So all my work that has to be done to a machine is done before I ever touch it. Because in some cases, what we'll find is by doing that, that optimization and bringing it into the orchestration platform, we're done. I don't have to do anything else. The other thing that we do is you want to create a single pane of glass. Right, so being able to create a product that is able to go across environments is a really key thing. It actually it, it increases adoption, by the way, and also gives you the ability to tie it back into your service management layer. And the other thing is, is that you can define templates and core technology that's reusable. So you may start out with, as an example, many clients have thousands of golden images, right? 
what you want to do is you want to look at all those golden images, find out what are the common elements, the patterns, and break that down even more. Once you get to the point of where you start to do your migrations, I'm going to argue that you can break it down even more. And then what you'll end up finding is, is that you don't need 3,000 golden images. You might need less than 100, depending on the size of the, size of the client, right? <clears throat> um, so let's talk a little bit about, about skills. The Accenture has over 3, 300,000 employees. As, as we start to, to talk about cloud, you know, we've got probably better than 100,000 employees working in cloud. As you start to look at this thing and you start to figure out how do I enable all of these people to understand what I'm building? What, what does it mean to have the core skills? So we talk, we talk about skills in three levels. We talk about skills in fundamentals, which is common things like what is Linux? How do, how do, I, how do I get to, to the common things? And the developer level, what, is, what, what are the things that a developer needs to know? What are the things that a, that, a, that a guy from delivery needs to know, right? So he's got to have, there's, there's advanced skills that we're going to put together. What we've done is we've broken it down in, in that you need skills for infrastructure, you need skills for cloud. And then at each layer, whether it's platform or um, automation or integration, you need to have people that understand what these things do. I'll give you an example of real life. I'm an enterprise architect. By, by nature, I am an infrastructure person. In order to continue to, to move forward in today's world of architecture, I had to transform my skills to understand applications. Right, so now I'm actually able to, to talk to someone about what it means to have an API-enabled application. What is the implications of those environments that can't do API? How do, how do I solve for that? The infrastructure is still important, right? So, but it's, it's at a different level now. Now it's all software-defined. But it runs on something, right? So you get a chance to, to kind of re reuse those skills. So what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, is don't be afraid, if you're, an infra if you're an infrastructure, don't be afraid to step further because you're going to need to. Cloud requires you to understand more than infrastructure. And so what, what does all this mean? Let's, let's talk about what, what is the finality of this. We look at orchestration as the glue, right? There, there are points that you're going to find that that you need to be able to build on top of each other. You need to be able to, to make sure that it's a fluid type process, right? We, we also, we look to align the business processes. So we, we define those, we break them down, we decompose them. We then turn around and we look, we look at the technology that's needed. And then we come up with, how do I use disruptive technology in order to make something happen? Right, so it's, disruptive technology can be good. You have to look at risk and tolerance. And once you understand what that is, then you can come back and you can start breaking it down. Right? So now, don't get caught in the complexity. Right? Remember, we, we have this really large canvas that we're going to paint on. We need to start from somewhere. And the question is, is where do I start? Right? So the, the easiest thing to do is to decompose it. The other thing that you can think about is, you're here as a technologist to support the business and the application. That's your number one job. If you do that, everything else will work. The other thing is, this is a journey. This is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in months. Don't sprint. <laughs> right? you, this, is, this is going to take a while to get through. Even the orchestration layer takes a bit of time to get through. So what you want to do is, again, you want to look for what's easy. Take, take the least complex environment, the least complex processes, break those down. Get an easy win. Look at your skills. Develop against that. Create an enablement plan. We use the open program for, tech, for technology we use Red Hat's open program. We consume, on average, a few hundred people per year that go, that go through that program. On top of that, we use strategy and operations that we build in-house. So we have our own academies, we have our own programs that our, our employees go through in order to extend themselves beyond the technology. The other thing that, that we look at is we have a center of excellence. The center of excellence is responsible for enablement, alliances, all, all the points of, of being able to build showcases, our demo environments are ours. Those demo environments are real, real environments that can be production environments that can get flipped into a client solution. So they're, 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 it's just a way of helping us build something that's, that's, that's viable. So I, I guess that, that, that's, that's the, the sum of it all. I want to thank you guys for coming in.
and uh, we'll take any questions if you have questions. No?